Hello everyone, my name is Garvin, and today we are returning back to Greek mythology and House Atreides. This family has dominated my videos so far. In fact, the only people I covered that aren't members of this family in one way or another are Prince Paris and the goddess Theus. That said, this video was requested by one of my Everwise patrons, so we're going to dive into the other children of King Tantalus, that being uh, Broteus and Niobe. So let's get right to it, shall we? Proteus, as I mentioned, was a son of King Tantalus, who you may recall from our first House Atreides video. Unlike his brother Pelops, Proteus doesn't get the benefit of a divine teacher and mentor. He's left on his own, and there's not a lot about him but some story fragments. The most enduring tradition we have comes to us from Pausanos, a 2nd century uh, Greek traveler and geographer, uh, by the way, that's 2nd century A.D., folks, sorry. Uh, Pasantis was born and grew up in Lydia and traveled to mainland Greece and wrote a description of the many sacred places, monuments, and geographic sites he visited. Now, among them was the Manisa Relief, which is a great stone carving of Cybele, who's an Antonian mother goddess. This still exists today, by the way, and you can see it in modern Turkey on Mount uh, Cipilus. The myth goes that Proteus was a great stone carver, sculptor, and hunter. He carved the Manisa relief, and that led to Artemis requesting that he carve one for her. Now, perhaps this is because of what happened to his sister Niobe, which we'll get to. He said no. Of course, it could also be that Artemis told him that she would pay him an exposure. If he said no to that, I wouldn't blame him. Artists are workers, and they deserve to be paid, folks. Either way, Artemis didn't take rejection very well. In fact, she drove him mad in retaliation, which I think we can all agree is an overreaction. In his madness, he threw himself into a funeral pyre, however, and, well, Burned to death. Some myths claim that he had a son he named Tantalus. I don't know why you would name your kid that, considering who you're naming him after. That guy also has a number of conflicting myths about him. In fact, some of these myths claim different parentage. For example, one claiming he was actually a son of Thyestes instead who was killed by his uncle and served to Thyestes for dinner. The myth that claims him as, as a son of Proteus, in at least one version, has him as the first husband of Clemenestra. This gets him murdered by his cousin Agamemnon, according to that story. I'm not entirely happy with either version, honestly. Ovid, the Roman writer, also claims that Proteus was actually killed by centaurs, in the wedding of Pyrethus, but honestly, I tend to ignore Ovid's versions because he's a Roman, not a Greek, and he tended to make changes to myths to take political pot shots at Augustus and other authorities. Now, if you like Ovid's versions, that's perfectly fine. I just want to boil this down to what the Greeks before Alexander were actually talking about, though, and that's not Ovid. Moving on. Niobe really only has one story about her, and honestly, it's where she shows remarkably terrible judgment. She married Omphion, a son of Zeus and Antiope. Antiope was actually a victim of Zeus and had fled her home in shame after Zeus assaulted her and got her pregnant. She was hunted down by King Lycus of Thebes. Now, she gave birth to two boys, and Lycus forced her to expose them on the slopes of the mountains, only for the boys to be adopted by shepherds. And if you've seen any of my other videos, at this point, we just have to assume adopting boys left on the mountains is just something Greek shepherds did as part of their job. Antiope herself, however, was handed over to Lycus's wife, 
Dursey, who would torment her for years. Eventually, she does manage to escape and find her sons on Vion and Zeus. The boys did not take the treatment of their mother well. Instead, they raised an army, marched on thieves, killed Lycus, and they killed Dursi by tying her to the horns of a wild bull and just letting it loose in the mountains. Um, Phion afterwards would go on to become the lover of the god Hermes and a famous player of the lyre. He was such a good player that Hermes had a lyre made of gold created for him and gave it to him as a gift. The brothers would also build the walls and fortification of Thebes, becoming of the mythic founders of the city. Unphion would then make the mistake of marrying Niobe. It was an easy mistake to make. Niobe was wealthy, beautiful, and also claimed divine heritage herself. Together they had many children, although the number is disputed. Homer claims 12, most claim 14, and Sappho claimed as many as 18. This is clearly a couple who enjoyed each other's company. During a festival to Leto, Niobe would stand up and declare anyone who honored Leto instead of her was an utter idiot. Well, Leto didn't like that and turned to her two children, Artemis and Apollo, who were quickly becoming the divine nemesis of this family. The two of them thought long and hard about how to respond to this slight before settling on murder, because it's the Bronze Age, and there's a murder quota for every divine being, apparently. They killed Niobe's children, and when Omphion reacted in anger, they killed him too. Niobe then fled to Mount uh, Sophilus, and in her weeping grief, turned to stone. I gotta note, this is another reason I find it hard to believe that Apollo would even care that Agamemnon was murdered, since Apollo and Artemis have repeatedly been in conflict with this family for generations now. I'm taking this story as more circumstantial evidence for my idea that Apollo ordered Orestes to kill his mother to avenge Cassandra, not Agamemnon. Is this supported at all by the mythology? Did any Greek or Roman authors ever suggest this? No. But, much like Ovid, I'm not going to let that stop me. Anyways, back to the actual myths. Now, I do want to mention that in some traditions, there was one or even two survivors. Cloris of Thebes was a daughter of Niobe and survived, but she was so traumatized that she was struck permanently pale as a ghost. And who can blame her, right? If I saw all of my family murdered by a pair of rampaging deities, I'd be pretty troubled for a long time as well. There is also a tradition of one of their sons surviving, but he is ran out of Thebes and ends up founding his own city, and that's really all I could find about him. And that's really it for the non-Pelops-descended branches of House Atreides. To be honest, this really reinforces the feeling of this family being rather thoroughly cursed. That said... I hope you enjoyed the video or at least found it somewhat informative. If you did, I would appreciate a like or a comment, as that really helps me in my battle against the Dreadlord algorithm, terror beyond his name. If you really enjoyed it, consider subscribing or joining the patron, where my Everwise patrons get to vote on upcoming videos, make requests, and get access to bloopers for as little as a dollar a month. Speaking of uh, my patrons, a special thank you to my biggest supporter, Big Steve. As always, I appreciate you, man. Next week, we'll be continuing with House Atreides with a video about Epigenia, uh, Orestes, and Electra. Until then, stay safe, keep reading.